R. A. Underwood, 1897. Let me read this statement again in John 1.12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. What is it to become sons of God? I wish to read one or two texts which refer to what it means. In Luke 3.38 we read of Adam and his children, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Adam was the son of God. What kind of a character did Adam possess? I turn to Genesis. In speaking of Adam, in the fifth chapter, first verse, it says, This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Adam was the son of God. He was made in the likeness of God. Speaking of sons who are adopted into this family, who have gone away, chosen another father, the apostle uses this language. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Colossians 3.10 Take another text in Romans 8.29 For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Christ was the Son of God. What kind of an image are these brethren going to have? Christ's. Will they belong to the same family if they have the same name? Yes, sons of God. It is just as true in reference to the name of God that it expresses the character as it is of the individual. What is the character of God? Turn to the language of the prophet of God, Moses, in the 33rd chapter of Exodus. When Moses was so anxious to see God's face, he says, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Then Moses pressed the matter a little closer. Show me thy glory. The Lord assured him that he would show him his glory and proclaimed his name. And thus we find that the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. That was the character of God, and this was the glory of God. In a special testimony, speaking of the glory of God, I find the statement, he will receive all, he welcomes all, he rejects no one. It is his glory to pardon the chief of sinners. God's character displays his glory. Christ says, And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them. Have you received it, brethren? Another expression comes to me in Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise how long and when. Notice the tense in which that is placed, the present, now to all eternity. I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Then, dear friends, if we have the name of God, we must have the character of God, and if we have the character of God, we know we have the glory of God. And when that statement is fulfilled which says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee, what does it mean? Ah, the character of God is seen upon us. Suppose the angel that is given the charge to go through the midst of God's people and set a mark or seal of God, which contains the name of God, and that name contains the character of God, and that character contains the glory of God. Suppose the angel 
should walk into our midst here tonight, upon how many of us could he place that name? Oh, when God weighs us, he weighs us in his own scales for just what we are. When we look around upon each other as brethren and sisters, we weigh each other. It is natural for us to do it. We put one another upon the scales in our own estimation and we weigh some men for far more than what God weighs them. Others, perhaps, we weigh a great deal less. But when God puts us upon the scales, he weighs us for just what we are and no more. And when the angel comes to you and me, unless we have our characters changed into the same image of God, the Lord cannot put upon our foreheads his name, because it would be a lie. It would not be truth. <laughs>